Hi everyone. In this video, I will share with you the 12 tiny signs you're doing well financially even when it doesn't feel that way. It might be challenging to determine your financial well-being sometimes. So paying attention to some of the signs I will share with you today will help you assess your current financial situation and track your progress over the coming months and years. Stay tuned. 1. Being immune to loss of income. The most incredible way to guard against income loss is to plan your future. Economic difficulties can result in a loss of income, which can be damaging and a severe setback. Fulfilling your financial obligations, such as debt reduction and retirement savings, will require dedication and time. We'll have terrible blows, horrible blows, unfair blows, doesn't matter. And some people recover and others don't. And, and there I think the attitude of Epictetus is the best. Several circumstances might result in you losing money so you should be equipped to deal with them when they happen. Contract termination, your firm going bankrupt, and being pushed into early retirement are a few examples of occurrences that might result in income loss. By planning in advance, you may retain stability, recover more quickly, and avoid the hardest consequences of a loss of income. Two, knowing how to separate emotions from your finances. Did you know that emotions impact practically every aspect of your life? Despite the fact that emotions are a component of what makes you human, they can also affect how you participate in decision-making. When you're terrified, your doubts may cloud your judgment, making it difficult to focus and react effectively. Consider buying investments in a particular company out of a desire to appease your greed. If the asset's value decreases after several months of appreciation, fear will force you to sell it immediately at a loss. When you behave more emotionally, you lose control over your finances. Incredibly, when you're excited, you can make snap decisions without considering the implications. A financially stable individual bases their decisions on reality. They'll either do extensive research or be aware of the benefits and drawbacks of their options. It's a very tough problem. Some people can control their emotions and other people cannot control their emotions. And unless you can, con unless you can control your emotions, you're probably not going to do very well in the stock market. I happen to have a certain temperament that works pretty well and that, that uh, I don't get excited because other people get excited. They will not allow elation or greed to dictate their financial choices. As a result, when feeling overwhelmed, they seek a second opinion from a financial expert rather than making snap judgments. 3. Your financial goals are clearly defined. Financial goals can help you maximize your financial resources. Financial goals might be immediate or long-term, like saving a million dollars for a pension. A person with stable money understands the value and importance of setting objectives and how to accomplish them. One tactic they might employ is the SMART acronym. If you haven't already, consider your financial mission statement and your goals for your money. While deciding on the objectives, this statement may serve as a useful guide. 4. You invest for retirement and also save. Situational readiness may be a reliable measure of your economic independence and commitment to maintaining it. You'll have to make ends meet without recurring revenue when that happens. Starting your savings and investments now is the only way to ensure a comfortable retirement. Nevertheless, if you don't prepare for retirement, you run the risk of relying on your loved ones or the government, which is a risk you don't want to take. Here are some ideas for investments and retirement savings. A pension plan that enables you to save a portion of your monthly salary until retirement is an option. Once you retire, you can choose between a lump sum payment and a monthly income. A bit more, you can invest your money from dividends, interest, or capital growth. Government securities, properties, or unit trust funds are examples of this. Because you already have a job, Consider taking early retirement. Investing and feeling good about it has always been challenging, 
thanks to outstanding online brokerage services like Betterment. Five, strive to keep yourself financially educated. Despite the fact that it is sometimes asserted that money ignorance is bliss, by reading fiscal literature, consulting seasoned consultants, and taking a financial literacy course, you may invest in enhancing your literacy skills and keeping your finances in check. You'll undoubtedly make budgetary errors if you don't have the necessary information. Nevertheless, some errors take time to correct, leaving you exposed economically. You have to keep learning because the world keeps changing. Continuous learning is absolutely required to have any significant achievement at all in the world. I invest as much in myself as you can. I mean, you're, you're your own biggest asset by far. I mean, you've got you've got all kinds of potential. All the people in this room, you, you know, you're lucky to be in this country, gotten a good education. But most people go through life using up a very, very small part of their potential. And so anything you do that invests in yourself, uh, is that's the best investment you can possibly make. Your financial position may be controlled and managed more effectively if you have a solid understanding of economics. You can distinguish between hazardous and trustworthy investments and make better choices. To learn more about investments and personal finances, check out some of these best-selling books from Amazon. The Napoleon Hill book, Think and Grow Rich, Getting Your Act Together, Life Lesson, Barb Markey, The Total Money Makeover, a proven plan for financial fitness, Dave Ramsey. Please use my link to visit my Amazon store to purchase these books at fantastic discounts. Moreover, the video description below includes a link to my Amazon store. As Charlie Munger said, those who keep learning will keep rising in life. Six, having your estate planning in order. Even after accepting the inevitable, economic turmoil persists. You want to ensure that your legacy is protected after your passing and that your dependents don't face financial hardship. Estate planning is something that everyone should think about. It's for more than just people who have a lot of money or property. Regardless of age or wealth, anybody may use estate planning to leave a legacy for loved ones. Regardless of how little your wealth is, you want to keep it from being heavily taxed or stolen by the government. The good news is that this can be avoided through estate planning. Therefore, you must designate a trustee to manage and distribute your assets, and you should always carry insurance coverage that your dependents can use. I would say this, I've, I've loosened up a little bit as I go along. Every time I rewrite my will, my kids are happy because they know I'm not reducing the amount anyway. <laughs> and I do, I do something else on this, that I find that which I think is an obvious thing, but, but I rewrite a will every five or six years or something like that, and, and I have them read it. They're the executors under it. They should understand <clears throat> how to carry out uh, their obligations that are embodied in the will. Seven, having the right insurance. Your finances are meant to be protected by insurance. A person with reliable finances might own several different insurance policies, Having the right coverage in place might lessen economic losses in the worst case situation. If, for instance, a fire damages your apartment or home, your insurance plan may help you restore or replace your belongings. Life insurance is another crucial issue, especially when you have kids. If something happens to you, a life insurance claim can be given to your loved ones. That implies your children won't experience financial uncertainty when you are gone. Eight, never overdrawing your checking account. Despite your checking account's overdraft protection, you still prefer a cushion to rely on security. You should thus refrain from buying anything else till it comes back. Only use your checking account once everything has been handled because fees could increase rapidly. This is partly because you detest paying overdraft fees. The essential factor is that you have enough cash to keep more in your checking account than you would need in a typical month. Nine, you use credit cards for convenience and rewards. I usually carry three credit cards in my wallet and almost always use them. How, some people would ask. 
I'm a certified financial analyst. I am, but with a catch. I pay them off every month. Using credit cards to stretch their income and make expenditures they can't afford is a prevalent bad behavior among those with unpredictable finances. To make an immediate online payment, you must utilize a credit card. You might do it because using your credit card to purchase gives you advantages. 10. You're headed in the right direction to reach your investment targets. Setting and achieving fiscal objectives are two distinct processes. One aspect of economic instability needs to catch up on these objectives. You need to cut your housing cost fast if your financial goals are to save for a down payment on a home. Yet if your monthly rent is 40% of your income, you'll need assistance to reach your goal. It will undoubtedly slow you down to borrow money from your down payment fund to pay bills. Prioritize your goals for the future, live within your means, and create distinct portfolios to help you stay on track to achieve them. 11. Not being concerned about losing your jobs. One common approach to show that you are economically solvent is to do this. Those who are independently wealthy don't worry about losing their jobs since they know their different sources of income and their power to change their circumstances. It's a terrible reality that most people in the U.S. live paycheck to paycheck. Their financial situation would collapse even if they lost their jobs for a month. Indeed, if you are likely to lose your job and don't have any other sources of income to rely on, worrying about your debt or responsibilities can keep you up at night. Your finances are in balance, or at least they won't be affected if you lost your job, so you don't worry about it. So how can you calmly handle your finances? Again, it all comes down to making sensible financial decisions like conserving money, avoiding debt, and investing. Your fiscal worry may go away more quickly as you become more aggressive about making money work for you. 12. Excellent payment history. Your credit history offers some very important clues about your finances. You can instantly contact the credit bureaus or creditors to address any issues or discrepancies by periodically examining your credit report. Did you know that consuming more than 35% of your available credit, making late or missed payments, and applying for credit frequently can lower your credit score? In order to raise your credit score, you should automate your monthly payments, pay off your debt, and use credit only for subsequent purchases. Economic independence, which is a long way from economic freedom, is the ultimate goal of fiscal stability. It doesn't end when you are fully comfortable and in control of your finances. Doing these things will keep you steady and keep you from heading in a direction that might make you lose control of your finances, even if it's just the beginning. You consequently get closer every day. As a result, to do that, you must regularly review your finances look for warning signals, and address any you find before things get out of hand. Remember when Charlie Munger said, spend each day trying to be a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well. Systematically, you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. Nevertheless, you build discipline by preparing for fast spurts. Slug it out one inch at a time, day by day. At the end of the day, if you live long enough, most people get what they deserve. And if you follow this advice, you'll eventually reach a point where you're financially secure, debt-free, and stress-free. If you don't exhibit any of these signs of positivity, settle for a few. But if you keep going, eventually the rest will follow. Please like, share, and comment if you found the video interesting. You can also express your opinions in the section below. For more videos like this one, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until the next video, see you. Thank you for watching.